Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a requested uh, experiment on the enthalpy of neutralization. We're going to be using good old sodium hydroxide, one mole per decimeter cubed, and we're going to be using one mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. Uh, we're using Vernier Logger Pro. Uh, other Logger Pro uh, extensions are available. So I've just checked the laboratory, and we only had 20 cm cubed uh, bulb pipettes. But that's okay, we can use those in the calculations, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm kind of old school when I'm practicing. So I overfill, and then I put my thumb on the top, and I wiggle it a little bit to get onto the uh, brown line with the bottom of the meniscus, just there. And I'm dropping that now into a polystyrene cup. We're using a polystyrene cup, why? To minimize heat losses to the surroundings. So don't forget, we let this fall under gravity. And as it falls under gravity, there'll be a small plug at the bottom. The makers of the glassware know that it is there. So just touch the surface of the liquid that will draw out the last portion of the sodium hydroxide, leaving a small plug, which the designers know it is there. And we can perhaps see from the stem that this is 20 mils or 20 cm cubed is better at 20 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we have our sodium hydroxide in here. The next one we need to get is our hydrochloric acid. And here is our HCl. We can put the thermometer probe into the sodium hydroxide should be at room temperature. It's been sat in the prep room uh, most of this afternoon. It's not been in the storage area. Uh, in case you're wondering, we are in Singapore, so it is quite warm to begin with. Um, where are we at? We're at 24.1 degrees. So I'm just going to press play on here. There we go, and it is currently recording. Well, that's taking our baseline value. I'm going to take my hydrochloric acid into my 20 cm cube pipette. We can have a look at uncertainties later on in the video as well. I'm going to draw that up, making sure there are no air bubbles in the bulb pipette. Very good. Again, back to my trusty thumb. I can wiggle it a little bit on the top of the pipette until the bottom of the meniscus is on the brown line, which is just there. Bingo. Right, so looking at the screen, we're being stable temperature for ooh, about 40 seconds now, 46 seconds. So on 50 seconds, I'm going to release the acid into the sodium hydroxide. There it goes. We can see an immediate temperature rise. Let's give it a chemistry swirl, as they say in the trade. <laughs> All falling again under gravity. Just touch the surface of the liquid with the pipette, draws out the last little bit. That's my acid and my alkali added. Obviously it's an exothermic reaction and you can see from the screen there's been a, a quite a, a rapid increase from around 25 up to uh, 30.1. It seems to be stabilizing at here. I'm just going to allow it to run its course and we'll allow it to start to drop back down again. Uh, don't forget that we're going to extrapolate on the graph because uh, from the point of mixing to the point of all the reactants being together, there is a time lag between those two areas. Okay, for the sake of our sanity, we're going to stop the video in just one second. This was the graph that we got from our experiments earlier. We can interrogate the graph and I've obviously focused down on the area of interest. So if we look here, I tried to uh, mix the HCl and the NaOH at uh, 50 seconds. Almost hit there, but that's, that's pretty much irrelevant. What is relevant is where we've begun. Uh, we began here at around about, uh, I think that is 24.1 degrees C. Okay. Um, we can also have a look and we can say, well, it stops here. That's about 30 degrees C. But we would be wrong. Why are we wrong? Well, because 
that is not the full temperature rise. What we need to do is we need to look at where the temperature started to fall and extrapolate back and extend the line, there we go, that's better, up to round about there. It's always difficult to see where the extrapolation goes. I'm trying to make it fit the calculation, but you get the idea. Come on, give me a break. There we go, right, a bit higher. Thank you very much, that's good. Okay, um, and obviously where do these points join? Well, this one started down here, and this one, please behave, thank you, is going to go up there. So where these two points meet is where, I will get it to meet, <laughs> there we go, that's better. Where those two points meet is where we have extrapolated back our data. There we go. That's a bit smarter. Uh, so now we can have a look. I'm going to take our magnifier, and where is this? Oh dear, I've run out of scale. <laughs> so what we're going to, well this is 30, and halfway through was 1. So that's going to be 24.1, uh, so it's going to be 31.2. How do you know it's 31.2 degrees C? Well, you're just going to have to believe me on this one. Because when I prepared this, I made the temperature difference 7.1 degrees C. So now it's equal 7.1 degrees C. If you do the experiment, you will make a better line of extrapolation than I did. And you will extend down here and carry on recording before you get bored and lose the will to live. Okay, there were 20 cm cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed HCl and 20 cm cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide in a polystyrene container. Um, I did extrapolate the graph and I found the temperature rise was 7.1 degrees C. So what is the enthalpy of neutralization for this bog standard reaction? Okay, we're gonna use the specific heat capacity of water. This is in your data booklets. And we know that the total mass was 40 G because we had 20 of HCl and 20 of NaOH. We're assuming the density is the density of water, which is one gram per centimeter cubed. So the total density is 40 G. Okay. Q, the energy, is the mass in grams. If we're using 4.18, it's 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Remember, it says not correctly. And then 7.1 is the delta T. If we times 40 our total mass by the specific heat capacity times 7.1, we get an answer of 1187 joules or 1.19, just taken to three sig fig kilojoules. Now from the equa equation, the moles of HCl is the moles of sodium hydroxide. We had 20 cm cubed in a thousand, and that is 0 0.02 moles because N is C times V, C was one mole per decimeter cubed, and here's our V to give us 0 0.02. If we scale this up to one mole, take our 1.19, three sig fig, times by one, divided by 0 0.02, which is here, we get an answer of 59.5, pretty good. Since the temperature rose, it's, it's exothermic, we'll put a negative sign, and here is how, Happy answer, three sig fig, 59.4. I've noticed it's a small error, that says 59.5, 59.4, 59.5. Um, I've not got the calculator with me. We're not going to fall out about that, I hope. Um, second part, if we use the specific heat capacity of sodium chloride, which is 4.03, rather than our 4.18, which is up here, we find it's 1144.52 joules, 1.1145 kilojoules. That's interesting. Why is that interesting? Well, using specific heat capacity of sodium chloride, if we times that energy by our, at 1 over our 0 0.02 to scale it up to moles, that's 57,226 joules. 3 sig fig, 
57.2 kilojoules per mole, and the data book value is 57.1 kilojoules per mole, which using my um, rather rudimentary polystyrene cup from the canteen and uh, data logger gives us an error of only 0 .0, uh, sorry, 0.2%. Well done us. Comments, like, subscribe,